good morning. It's Sunday, uh, January 2nd. Obviously, we're not in church. Uh, power was out of church this morning. We apologize for that. Power's out of the McClellan household, so apologize for how this looks. But uh, obviously, if you're all watching, you ain't uh, watching for Doug's looks. You're you're uh, watching to, to hear God's word. So uh, we want to read this morning from uh, Matthew chapter 28. And uh, the last two verses of that, verse 19 and verse 20, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, let us pray. Father, again, we thank you for another uh, Lord's Day that you brought us to. We thank you for another... Uh, chance that we have to look at your word and father we just ask that you would uh, put the words in our mouth that need said lord that we would uh, help somebody along the way today lord again we thank you we praise you and we ask these things in christ's name and amen letting everyone know letting everyone know uh New Year's is a happy time, right? Uh, everybody's rejoicing that uh, we've made it through another year, that God's uh, put us into a new one. Uh, but folks, we should be letting everyone know about Christ. We should be uh, letting everyone know uh, that there is salvation available if you'll only accept it. And uh, Titus 2.11 says the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared unto all men. Okay. So folks, there is no one who's going to stand before God in judgment and say, nobody told me, nobody let me know. Uh, it says the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. And if it hadn't, then you know what? Then someone could stand in judgment and say, listen, you can't hold me accountable. Okay. But he, he's let the message go out to all people. And folks, we should be doing our part to let everyone know that there is salvation available in Christ. Uh, you should, uh, God lets us know, okay? He, he lets people know, no matter, uh, the, the hardest skeptic, okay? The, the most doubtful person in the world, God will let them know that he exists, okay? Think back in Exodus, uh, around chapter 7, after Moses has been sent to, to get the children of Israel, and uh, Pharaoh's told him, no, I'm not going to let him go. And God tells Moses in that seventh chapter, says uh, that uh, Pharaoh will not hearken unto thee, for I've hardened his heart, and uh, I did it for a reason, so that when I put forth my hand against Egypt, that all of Egypt will know that I am the Lord when I bring out the children of Israel with great judgments. Okay, and you think back to that. You think of all the plagues that fell upon Egypt. And the people, it didn't take long after a few plagues that they was uh, telling Pharaoh, listen, wake up, look around. Everything is destroyed. Why don't you let these people go? Obviously, their God is the God, okay? But he would continue to, to harden his heart until finally on the last plague when all the firstborn were slayed. Then he finally lets the Israelites go. And you recall that when they left, the Egyptians were just bringing them their gold, their jewelry, just like, please, just leave. Just leave. We get it now. Your God is God. Okay. But no matter the hardest skeptic, God will let them know that, that he exists and that he is the true God. Uh, you recall then, as they, even though the, Egypt, the Egyptians, the Egyptian people accepted that, uh, after the Israelites leave, Pharaoh's heart's hardened again and he runs after them. And uh, in that 14th chapter of Exodus, as, as he's got them trapped between uh, the Red Sea and, and his army, that again, God puts up a barrier between them to protect them and allows uh, the Red Sea to part and the Israelites to go across on dry land. And uh, you would think that after that, that, that Pharaoh would have 
just stopped and said, you know, uh, well, I, I just don't believe. Okay. But it said that he hardened his heart again, that they, they pursued after him, that the, their, their wheels came off after they come into the middle of the Red Sea and that, uh, that uh, God allowed the waters to part back over and to destroy all of them. And uh, again, he tells Moses, says, as they're going through, he says, listen, I'm hardening his heart that the, all of Pharaoh's army shall know that I'll have honor upon them, upon his chariots, upon his horsemen, and that I am God, okay? Folks, even the hardest skeptic, okay? And you'd be hard pressed to find a bigger skeptic than Pharaoh, even after all that he saw. But folks, there are those today that are, they, they seem to be that hard to skeptic. You know, I just, I don't believe, I don't want to believe, I don't need that. Uh, go peddle that to someone else. But folks, even the hard to skeptic, God lets them know that he is God. Uh, one of Moses' uh, sidekicks, if you will, Joshua, he's seen all this, okay? He, he's seen how God had delivered them from slavery, slavery down in Egypt to uh, bring them to the, to the edge of the promised land. And uh, you recall in uh, Ex or Exodus, Joshua chapter four, okay, after they've crossed the River Jordan. And when they crossed the River Jordan, uh, Joshua had them get 12 stones out of the river and to set up a, an altar after they, they crossed through on dry land. And he said, uh, that the reason that they did this was so that when your children would ask, what does this mean? What does this stand for? That you can tell them that the, the Lord brought us through on dry ground when he parted the, the river Jordan, just like he did when he parted the Red Sea for us. That all the earth may know that uh, he is a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Folks, listen, God removes barriers. He, he shows every day that he removes barriers. He had showed Joshua, listen, I can remove the barrier of the Red Sea. I can remove the barrier of the raging river Jordan. And there are people today that they, they, they have barriers set up, at least in their own mind, that, you know what, I, I, I can't get there. But folks, God can tear down those barriers. Even when we're in church, okay, there are barriers for people even in church, okay? There are reasons why people won't come to the altar. Okay, everybody's going to think I did something. Okay, everybody's going to be talking about me. Uh, listen, folks, nobody's going to stop you from going to the altar. If they did, then we would go back to our football days and we'd knock them out of the way so that you could get there. But, folks, that, that, that Satan tries to put barriers up for people today. But even despite the barriers they try to put up, God will let them know that, you know what, there's still salvation available. And there are people that uh, maybe they've, they've gotten out of church, okay? And, and Satan's using that as a barrier. Listen, you can't go back because everybody's going to be uh, talking about you. Everybody's going to be saying, well, where have you been? But folks, that isn't the case. Again, you look at the prodigal son. He didn't treat the, his son with shame when he came back. The father went out and embraced him, told him how much he loved him. And there are those today that they have gotten away from church. They have gotten away from God's house. And the, the barrier in their minds, well, I can't go back because people are going to be thinking things about me. Folks, nobody's going to be thinking things about you. They're going to be uh, welcoming you back with open arms. Okay. But folks, God lets people know that there are, uh, that he's still God and that there's salvation available no matter what barriers may come up between us. Okay. Folks, God lets people know that there's a God no matter how big a foe they're facing, okay? First uh, Samuel 17, I believe. You think back to David and Goliath, okay? Here, the, here this giant has come out and he's mocked uh, the, uh, the armies of Israel for 40 days. And uh, here's this little shepherd, this young man that comes and uh, tells Saul, listen, I'll, I'll go out, I'll fight him, okay? And he comes out and Goliath is just enraged. Listen, how, why are you, you all mocking me? You send out this boy to fight? 
And he tells David, listen, I, I'm going to take you off your head. Okay, how dare you come and then insult me this way? But David's response was uh, around verse 45, 44, somewhere in there. Uh, he told Goliath, said, uh, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. And he tells him, he says, this day, Will I take thy head off of thee? And all the carcasses of the Philistines shall be devoured by the fowls of the air and the beasts of the earth, that all of the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Okay? This was a giant. This was a scary individual. But David goes out with no fear, but faith. And folks, that's the problem. <laughs> we look at, at the foes, we look at the giants that we're facing and people uh, get consumed by the fear and they lose the faith. Folks, David went out with faith in a rock, right? Put the, the rock in the sling, one shot right between the eyes, Okay. Folks, David went out with faith in a rock. We should be going out letting people know because we have faith in a rock today. And that rock is Christ. But so many people let the foe, let the giants just uh, consume us with fear. But folks, you gotta have faith <laughs> and you gotta have a rock. If you have faith in a rock, then guess what? Everybody else will know that there's a God. Not only in Israel, but in Pinch Ridge, in Elkview, in West Virginia, in, in wherever you're at today. But you got to have faith and you got to have a rock. David had faith and David had a rock. But letting everyone know, letting everyone know. Folks, he'll let everyone know if one person is willing to take a stand. He'll let everyone know that there's a God if one person is willing to take a stand. First Kings chapter 18, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Uh, Elijah, as he goes to Mount Carmel, and he, he comes and he, he, he says, okay, it's me and God on one side, and it's uh, the 450 prophets of Baal and the other 400 uh, prophets of Jezebel on the other. And if God be God, then worship him. And if Baal be God, then worship him. It said the people answered him not a word. Okay. And folks, that's the problem today. You got to show people that there is a choice. You have to show people that there's a difference. Well, I just said, listen, I don't care what the rest of you think. <laughs> I know, and God is on my side. Folks, it doesn't matter what the number is. You plus God is a majority. Elijah knew that, that him plus God was a majority. And, and they go through and uh, he, he lets the, the prophets of Baal go first. And you know, they cry and they carry on and they cut themselves and nobody answers. And Elijah kind of mocks him. Well, you know, uh, Baal must be sleeping or he must be busy or something, uh, something else. You know, why don't you just holler a little louder? But then when it comes to his time, and, and you all know this, I, I, I realize that, okay? You know, he, he prepared the offering. He had uh, uh, ended up 12 barrels of water being poured over the offering, just soaking it, uh, filling up a, a, a ditch around it, and said at the time of the evening sacrifice that he prayed unto God. And he said, God, show these people that thou art God and that I am thy servant and that all these things have I did because you've told me to. And folks, that's the way we are. I don't care if everybody knows who Doug is. Don't care if anybody knows who Doug is. But what I do care about is that you understand that every time that we get up and preach out of this Bible, it's from what God has told us, okay? To let people know that there is a God, that there is salvation. And Elijah, that's what he does. He prays, Lord, show them. Show them. And it said that God heard him. 
and that he sent the fire down, and that it, it, it uh, lit up the sacrifice and burnt the stones and uh, licked up all the water that was in the trance. And you know, what was the people's response? The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Folks, none of that happens if one person <laughs> isn't willing to stand, okay? For your loved ones, for your friends, for your neighbors, for them to come unto a knowledge of Christ, folks, you've got to be willing to take the stand, just like Elijah. You may be the only one in your family. But folks, if you're willing to take a stand, then guess what? God will let everyone else know that there's salvation available. But you've got to be willing to take a stand. Elijah was willing to take a stand. And when he was willing to take a stand, that let everyone else know <laughs> that there was a God. Folks, if you want other people to come to a, to a saving knowledge of Christ, if you want other people to, to, to get faith, <laughs> then you've got to show them your faith. Okay? And that's where a lot of people are failing today. That's where a lot of people are failing today. Listen, why should someone else believe? Why should someone else come to church if you're not going? I know, that's a hard question, okay? But you got to answer that, okay? You got to answer that. Why should someone else want to study the Bible or read the Bible if they never see you do it? Why should someone else want to call out to God in prayer when they never hear you pray? Okay? If you want other people to, to acquire faith, then guess what? They have to see your faith. And when they see your faith, that will let them know, again, that there is a God. Daniel chapter three, another one of our favorite chapters in the Bible. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to, to bow down to, to Nebuchadnezzar's image. And they bring him before him and he, he tells him, okay, listen, I, I, you guys are my friends and I'm trying to be reasonable here. And listen, you, you just bow down now and we'll forget all this ever happened. And it says that we're not careful to answer thee in this matter, okay? In other words, we don't even have to think about our response here. If our God, whom we serve, is able to, to deliver us out of the, the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not bow down unto thine image, nor worship thy gods. Okay? Again, Nebuchadnezzar throws him in the fiery furnace. The, the furnace is so hot that it slays the, the soldiers that, that throw him in there. And after a while, Nebuchadnezzar looks and he says, did we not throw three people in? And it is... Uh, Advisors are saying, yeah, we threw in three. He says, well, I see four up walking around and they have, they're loose and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. Folks, when you show other people your faith, God will show them he exists. But if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego don't show their faith, then guess what? Nebuchadnezzar doesn't believe. Other people that sees that don't believe. Folks, there are people that are, are, are wanting so bad to believe in something. Needing to believe in something. And folks, if they look at your faith, then that helps them that helps let them know that, you know what, they're, 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 there's an answer. There's something that I can depend on. There's something that I can trust in. They said, listen, King, our God's able to deliver us out of this, but even if he doesn't, you know what? We still trust him. Does that faith even exist today? Folks, there are people that don't have enough faith to come to church on a regular basis. How would you have enough faith to put your life on the line? Now, amen or ouch, okay? But folks, if you're wanting other people to, to, 
to come to a knowledge of faith. And guess what? They've got to see your faith. They have got to see your faith. But letting people know. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they let people know where they stood. Elijah let people know where he stood. Folks, are you letting people know where you stand? If not, then how do you expect them to ever know who God is? How do you expect them to ever uh, put their trust in something that you won't put your trust in? But letting people know, letting everyone know. Folks, even in times of death and sorrow, God will let people know that, that he's there, that he exists, that he is in control. Just probably a page back from that, in Matthew chapter 27, after Christ has been crucified, okay, after he's given up the ghost, you read around the 51st verse, somewhere in there, okay, said that there was a great earthquake and that the rocks rent and that the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, okay? Again, why was it from top to bottom? From God, God was the one that rent it, okay? Normally when things rip, they rip from bottom up on a curtain, okay? Said this veil was rent from top to bottom. All these things happen and people look and say, whoa, uh, there was something about this guy. Right, the centurion, him and the others, they looked and they said, truly this man was the son of God. Folks, even in death, even in sorrow, God shows that he is God. God shows that, you know what? You can trust and believe on me. Because folks, there is nothing else to trust and believe in. Okay? It's good to have family. It's good to have friends. It's good to have neighbors. It's good to have coworkers that you can depend on. But folks, if you're not dependent on God, you're not dependent on anything. But letting everyone know, folks, God has let everyone know that he is God. You know, the book of Matthew starts off with the birth of Christ. But it doesn't end with the crucifixion. It doesn't end with his ascension. But you know what it ends with? It ends with a command for us. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The Great Commission, that's what this is called at the end of Matthew, the Great Commission. Folks, we have a Great Commission today to go and spread the good news that, you know what? There is a Savior, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And folks, you can have salvation today if you'll only accept it. Accept, believe, and confess, okay? We ain't gonna make you go through a 12-step program. We ain't gonna make you do this or that, but you know what? Just believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But folks, it's going to be hard for your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, for all these other people to believe if they can't see your belief, okay? If you don't bother to say anything about him, then why should they believe in him? And there are Christians that will look and say, well, listen, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a teacher, I'm not this or that, I, I can't do that. Acts 1.8 said, but after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, ye shall receive power, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. You know what Christ said? Listen, after I leave, you will have power to be witnesses in all these places. In Jerusalem, okay, in your own neighborhood where it's comfortable, where everybody knows you, Okay, in all Judea, in the area around you, okay, your workplace, all these other places, the store, at the ball game. Folks, it's hard to be a witness at the ball game. Hard for people to want to come to church when uh, the call goes against you and you start yelling and screaming and carrying on like bloody murder. And then you're going to turn around and invite somebody to church. 
it's really hard when you're at the restaurant or you're at the store and something goes wrong and you start yelling at this little 18 year old girl who's just trying to do her job and it's not her fault. But then you're going to turn around and invite that same person behind you. Hey, why don't you come to church? Witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and in all Samaria. You know, Samaria was a place that the Jews didn't want to go. Folks, there are places that we don't want to go that aren't comfortable for us today. But you need to, okay? And I'm not talking down to the crack houses or wherever that's uh, the, the scary places. Folks, it's sad. It's too scary for people to go down the hall in their own house to talk to their own family about Jesus Christ. But that's what he's commanded us to do. Let everyone know, even under the uttermost part of the earth, even under the uttermost part of the earth. Well, Doug, I can't go to the deepest jungles of Africa. No, but you know what? You can pray for those that are. You can pray for those that are. You can help in whatever way. Again, we've uh, did several things the last several years for Samaritan's Purse, okay, Franklin Graham's ministry, where they spread not only just a Christmas box full of gifts for kids, but they spread the message of Christ even to these uttermost parts of the earth that, folks, I'm never going to go to, you're never going to go to. But he said, you know what? You need to let everyone know that I am the Lord. Folks, are you letting people know that he is the Lord today? That's the question. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for another day you brought us through. We thank you for another year that you brought us through, Lord, and uh, for all your many blessings. And Father, we ask for forgiveness, Father, when uh, these little things like the power on out maybe aggravate us and uh, trouble us. But uh, folks, uh, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that uh, every day you show that, that you are God, that you are in control. And Father, we just ask now that you would uh, help us, help use us to show others that uh, there is a God and that there is salvation if they'll only accept it. Father, again, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask these things in Christ's name and amen. Folks, again, uh, we hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Lord willing, uh, we'll be back in church Wednesday night for a prayer meeting, uh, children's church and youth group. Uh, hopefully the power will be back on. Uh, for those of you who are, are following along, the, the Bible book for uh, the month of January will be 2 Kings. We just finished 1 Kings, so uh, might as well just go ahead and finish finish that out, 2 Kings. and. Uh, uh, folks, I know probably most of you have your own reading schedule or whatever, but uh, take time, take time to read God's Word. And, and if uh, if you've never read some of these historical books like First and Second Kings, just uh, like the old commercial with Mikey, okay, try it. You'll like it, and you'll get something out of it, okay? If you didn't, then I wouldn't bother to tell you to do it, okay? But uh, Second Kings will be the Bible book for January, so... Again, uh, we uh, pray each of you has a, a blessed Sunday and uh, that God will keep you safe throughout this week. Uh, again, thank you and God bless each one of you.